So let me start out by saying the reason I really dive into this field uh, is I've been a management consultant for most of my career, starting my uh, career at Accenture, uh, later leading KPMG's uh, Global Project Services. And one of the bias I always had is always amazing to me that there are so many good ideas in organization that sits on shelf and never really gets implemented. And even the ones that do start the implementation path often fail. So let me start out with this sort of nugget that Thomas Edison uh, uh, found. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% uh, perspiration. And I think that is very, very true in our world today. So let me go on. Okay, so my interpretation is really having great idea is only 1% of the effort. Getting it done is the other 99%. I think with the audience we currently have, I think a lot of you could resonate with that. You know, the questions you can ask is how well does your organization successfully execute its strategy? Well, the overall picture in the market today is fairly dismal. According to multiple, I would say anecdotal, not necessarily scientific sources, 90%, as high as 90% of well-formulated strategies fail due to poor execution. And that's an astonishing amount uh, if you think about that. My company, PMO Advisory, also conduct research in this area. We even came up with an index later you'll see called execution index. Um, but one of the questions is how important uh, is execution, business execution to organizations? And 47% of the survey respondents believe business execution is extremely important or the single most important activity to their organization. And yet, only 9% of the respondents are very satisfied. So you can see that also means 91% are not particularly satisfied, which quite in line with the 90% failure rate. This means that as organization executives, we need to think about how we can do things differently. And, and this is where the concept of what I call strategic business execution and later marrying it with portfolio management come to play. Our current understanding of study of management places undue emphasis and expectation on strategic planning. Um, I teach in MBA school, for example, in Stevens, as well as at Montclair State University. And most of the students who pursue an MBA, or for that matter, even bachelor degrees in management, often want to be leaders, visionaries, strategic planners. Most people do not go to school to pursue, for example, how to be a grunt worker working on the detail roll up your sleeve execution. And it is a pain point, I think, not only for the students, but also for business. If you go Amazon and you type strategy, strategic planning, you'll find there's tons of books, thousands of hits, and yet the minute you type execution or implementation or something relevant to that, you get maybe a couple hundred hits. So the emphasis on planning and weak attention on implementation is one of the main culprits of this most state of execution. We need a new way to think, plan, and do in order to achieve better results. This way requires synthesis across disciplines. It's not just project management. It's not just portfolio management. It is how do we put multiple disciplines and different competencies together. Uh, and this is what my firm has tried to do on the consulting side, and we call it the Strategic Business Execution, or SBE. So this presentation largely introduces this framework called Strategic Business Execution, and then marrying it with the project portfolio management. We believe by this synthesis, it will lead to much better execution for organization. So strategic business execution is about doing the right things in the right way, not just once, but sustainably over time. And this is a bit peeve of mine. A lot of organizations have done project well, but it's one time. It's very difficult to repeat that execution excellence over time across different teams, across different units in the organization. And what it really requires organization to do in some ways, in a nutshell, is to make the tough decisions up front, 
to focus their resources on the few things that they have to do well and the rest of things maybe just get by. So the benefit of the business execution framework at the end of the day is really simple, getting the right things done. They may not be perfect um, and there will be many trade-offs. But the alternative, not completing and not achieving results, is often far worse. The framework is very simple in some ways. We look across four different pillars. Uh, sometimes we call it dimensions and components. And really, it's the soft side of the culture, the value behavior, plus the enabling competency at the individual and the personal level, uh, as well sometimes at the team level plus core disciplines. Disciplines are well-founded body of knowledge, such as project management, portfolio management, organization change. You glue that together with a set of integrating processes. These are the processes that essentially serve as adhesive, as glues that tie the organization together. These are things like knowledge management, communication. And when you put that together, you form a formidable framework that can ensure greater execution excellence um, and over time. So here are some of the specific components, for example, in the strategic business execution framework. The culture, you look at the culture of accountability. You know, for example, do people show up to meetings? Do the meetings start on time? If people agree on X, Y, Z actions, do, are they actually carried out? Uh, commitment, follow through, resiliency. These are all attributes of strong execution culture. Enabling competency, that includes decision making, especially making tough decisions. How to solve problems, put out fires. Managerial courage, that encourages management to take risks. And one thing I often tell my students and even participants in our boot camp, fail early, fail fast, recover, be resilient, and move on. But these are competencies that have to be learned. Integrating processes, as I mentioned before, these are the organization glue that ties one party to another, one division to another division, one team to another team. These include communication, knowledge management, issue management, performance management, strategy alignment. And then the final piece are the core discipline. These disciplines are well-founded, strong body of knowledge, sometimes based on best practices, sometimes based on common practices but that includes portfolio management, project management, PMO, process improvement, organization development, and so on and so forth. So that's the overall picture. Now, I want to take a step back a little bit. And as a managed consultant, we've been trained to sort of how do we help organization? How do we simplify complex ideas? Uh, and this is what this picture try to do. When we look at organizations or viable organization, and key word is viable, um, conducts one uh, conducts all three of these activities, and they're planning, operating, and changing. What do I mean by that? Even a mom and pop shop, a corner store that sells candies down the street, for example, still conducts some level of planning. For example, every week or maybe even more frequent, they count how many candies they sold. That will make them decide whether we need to replenish XYZ candy more so than something else. They obviously need to open the store front door, turn on their lights, and serve their business. Operating is where organization makes the money, brings in the revenue to keep the light on. But even a mom and pop shop are susceptible to change in the environment. For example, what if a 7-Eleven or another shop opened down the street? Well, how do you cope with that? Do we need to offer different product, better product, better pricing, better customer services? All these brings together that viable organization. If you look at your organization, you could probably distill and summarize those activities into these three, the planning, operating, and changing. And of course, how much of these are execution related? Well, the answer is really quite a lot. If you look across the organization and if you look at an activity map, some of the larger organizations under planning, for example, could be corporate strategy, how do we design the best optimal structure? What are the integration between the different divisions that we need to have? What are the business strategies? Under operating